The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, good morning and welcome to another D-Link webinar. Um, we're here today to talk about um, 5G, um, the who, the what, the why, and the where. Um, so we're going to go through in quite a bit of uh, detail. Um, just first things first, I'm going to apologise. I'm I'm suffering slightly with, with hay fever this morning. I've, I've taken my tablet, so if I sound a little bit bunged up, I do apologise. Um, but um, I'm, I'm sure that uh, Craig, who is on hand, will um, will ably take up my, a lot of the talking for me. <laughs> yeah, if you just start sneezing, we'll hear and I'll take over. <laughs> I, I, I heard rumours last week, Craig, that there was a webinar that went on without you. Uh, I, I, I don't know how that happened. We, we might... Sacrilegious, isn't it? I'm not sure if that's allowed. Yeah, <laughs> yes, well... it did happen. Uh, it was a nice break for me. <laughs> yeah, and and um, Mark and Mark and Paul did did a very good job. So if anyone wasn't able to make it last week, it is up on our YouTube channel. Um, slightly different from us to to let the salespeople take over, but um, very informative and um, um, you'll um, a lot to learn about nucleus and the applications for different uh, industries and and um, a lot of that stuff. Um, but we're here today to talk about five G. Um, so let's. Uh, let's get started um sorry to reuse the slide that we've we've used before but it is um it is always good to look at um how we arrived at where we are today um so let's um let's have a quick refresher course of how we got to 5g um so 1g was originally the first generation of telephone uh, telecom networks uh, it, it was uh, established in 1979 and it, it it basically just allowed us to talk to each other while while we while we were mobile. Two uh, G was the second iteration. It came in in 1991. Uh, it was the first generation that allowed us to send text messages. Um, so we didn't need to talk to people as much as we did previously, uh, which for a lot of people was was very good uh, uh, very good news. Um, between 2G and 3G, the 2.5 and 2.75 um, generations were um, released, and they involved using uh, GPRS and Edge technology. Um, but then in 1998, finally, uh, 3G bought the whole mobile internet experience to us. Um, uh, admittedly, at first, with, with limited success. Um, that was shortly followed up by 3.5G, which brought a truly mobile internet experience and unleashed uh, the, the world of mobile apps um, on us. About me. Uh, 4G, 4G came out in 2008, um, and those networks brought the um, voice and data um, or VoIP. Um, services, super fast broadband internet experience with with unified networks, architectures and protocols. Uh, and then followed up shortly uh, by uh, 4G LTE in 2009. The, the LTE stands for long term evolution um, and it basically doubled data speed. So it only took one year um, for that to happen. And now, now we are emerging into the 5G world and 5G networks will expand broadband wireless services beyond the mobile internet to the internet of things and critical communication segments. Uh, so that's basically bringing us up to where we are today. Yeah, I think a lot of people would probably have jumped on about 3G or 3.5G, that kind of area. Yeah. Um, not many of us were, were using them back then, I think, for uh, the early 90s and 80s period. But uh, I know for me, it was about 3.5G around then. Had that first phone, the old flip phone that comes up with the uh, <laughs> internet experience with just a couple of links, <laughs> if anyone remembers that. It, it, it always reminds me of the um, the classic uh, back to um, um, Only Fools and Horses episode um, where, where Del Boy had the old instant aerial phone, um, Craig, I don't know that, but um, in a while. He, he, had the, he had the mobile phone in his pocket and um, somebody taps his pocket and the instant aerial shoots and goes up his nose and causes him to fall over it. Hilarious. That was my first, uh, <laughs> that was my first mobile phone experience. I think that was in the 80s. But uh, yeah, sorry, bit of nostalgia there for everyone. <laughs> um, 
So what is what is 5G? And I've, I've broken it down into into five easy chunks just to um, just to give a, just a quick summary of exactly what it is and what it's bringing to us. Uh, because there's so much technical stuff, there's so much going on in the background. Um, it's always nice to start with a, with a quick summary. So the major benefits of 5G will be next generation speeds, um, a greater bandwidth, much, much, much reduced latency, which a lot of people are looking forward to. Um, the, the whole thing comes with massively increased capacity. Uh, and while it, it's it's not a, a feature of 5G, but what 5G will bring for us is um, a fuel for transformative new technologies. There's there's a lot of people who are worried about automation, taking people's jobs and things like that. But I'm fairly sure that what we'll find is that 5G will create new technologies that we just don't know that they exist at the moment. Um, often often called uh, creative destruction by by a lot of people. Um, so just to go into a little bit of um, a little bit of detail on the um, 5G new radio, um, I think Craig is a much better place to uh, to, have a, to talk about this uh, rather than me. <laughs> yes, I, I won't bore people with too many acronyms. Um, there's, <laughs> there's plenty of documents out there on 5G if you want to have a look at them. But uh, basically, just a new radio. What that means is that there's a new uh, um, frequencies that are available in 5G that you haven't used in 4G. doesn't mean everything's replaced. You still use some of those lower frequencies and there's reasons for that, which I'll go into a little bit later. Um, but 5G is probably between, um, you might have heard the term MM wave. MM wave being multimeter, uh, multimeter wave spectrum is probably about 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. So that's what's opened up on that 5G area. Um, and that allows you to give uh, some, some greater speeds um, optimized OFDM, that's orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, um, and that's basically just um, how the payload goes across. So um, we always use that truck analogy with pallets on the back of a truck. Um, more pallets on the back of a truck and less trucks. Think of it that way. Just more, more, more optimized um, data flow. Uh, beam forming, so it kind of thinks about where you're standing and where you're using the devices between you and the uh, cell structures. Um, and like I said, unified design across all frequencies and smaller cell towers, that's really down to the infrastructure and that, that's what we're getting with 5G. What you brings, um, so finally we're going to be looking at that sub one millisecond latency. Oof, nice. Whether we actually get that or not is going to be a future thing, Alan. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for that is the infrastructure has to be there to support it, but you are going to get much later, uh, lower latency speed speeds. I think that's really going to open up a lot of different uh, ways that we use Wi-Fi at the moment because um, things like VoIP and, and how we talk, how we game, all, all these sort of creature comforts that we take for granted on 4G are going to be vastly improved. Uh, no, we're, we're not. We're not going to be able to blame um, so much on uh, on on our internet connections when we lose on FIFA or Call of Duty anymore. Great, it's <laughs> exactly. not going to be such a good excuse when 5G comes around. I know. Less excuses for us old ones, right? Damn it. <laughs> Uh, data rates, so peak red data rates are going to go up. Uh, so we're looking at that 20 gigabits per second. So uh, we'll go into a bit more of what that actually means so that you can visualize what that, that does for you. Um, and, and we'll leave that there, I think, um, and go on to how you're going to actually use 5G. A lot of people are going to realize 4G, 5G, obviously 5G is going to be better. A lot of people won't really care so much about how it works as long as it works better. And, yeah. and uh, <laughs> I, I think well, let's see what, what it can do for you. Yeah, I think, I think that's definitely what most people are, uh, are concerned about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just um, okay. yeah, yeah. So just 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 to um, um just to move, talk quickly about the um, the different bands. Craig, Craig touched on these um, briefly before, uh, but um, there's there's the three different. Um, bands on on 5G, um, a low band, a mid band, and and, and a high band. Um, so we go from the low band, which has um, lower speeds but very good coverage area. Um, the mid band obviously sits in the middle, and then the high band um, 
which is the super fast, um, super fast 5G, the real super speed version, um, and that will have a much lower, um, a, a much lower radius. Um, I think this is why the 5G network it will take a long time to roll out, Craig, um, specifically. But even the lowest band on 5G is still faster than 4G LTE, I, I believe. Yes. Yeah, absolutely right. Mm. Yeah. And there's a lot of other technologies. It's not just the fact that it's a higher band frequency. No. 5G brings with it a lots of uh, different mechanisms in order to actually make use of that frequency as well. Brilliant. Um, so the rollout, the rollout has started. Uh, as, as we know, the mobile companies are very keen to um, um, to get out there and, and get 5G rolling as, um, as as a great revenue driver for them, uh, I'm I'm sat with my uh, Samsung 5G S20 on my desk, but um, I'm looking disappointing uh, disappointingly at the area between Reading and London, and just where I live is 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 a dark green patch. So there's no 5G for me yet, despite me owning the um, the right technology for there, but you can you can clearly see that um, it's a concentration around cities first of all. Um, quite why they've picked South End, I, I I don't really know, Craig. Rather than places like Reading, but um... <laughs> <laughs> everybody loves South End. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we do at the moment. I'd love to be down there. I think Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week. But um, <laughs> a strange a strange choice for for a five G rollout. I would have suggested. <laughs> <laughs> okay um so how fast is is 5g um scaringly fast i think as the uh, as, as the picture on the slide will um will attest to um data rates are 20 times faster than 4g and provide can also provide one gigabyte simultaneously to um all the workers on the same office floor uh, put simply, it's like being able to download a full HD movie and in as little as 10 seconds, uh, kind of defeating the, uh, the the purpose of streaming there. It will just download the whole thing in 10 seconds. Um, and the capacity also is, is, um, uh, is massively increased where it can deliver up to 1 million connections per square kilometer. So... All, all, all in all, a massive, massive increase from uh, 4G there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what we're going to see is that it's it's going to leave a lot of actual cabled connections in the dust when it comes to uh, a few years' time. And I think a lot of people will switch to, to these wireless connections completely. Yeah. Um, because yeah. why go for something that's sort of 20, 20 megabits per second when you can get gigabits per second and you can mm. travel with it? We'll just wait till you see our hotspot, Craig. That's all. That'll convert a few people, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what's in what, what's in it for business? I I I I sat down and I've watched a lot of five G stuff, but they don't really talk about the applications um, for business. And um, there's a lot of talk about new radio frequencies and and all of this other stuff, but. Um, with the with the economy the way that it is at the moment, uh, we think that um, the rollout of five G really has the potential to um, supercharge recovery for UK businesses. But uh, according to research done by Barclays um, last year, just fifteen percent of businesses are thinking about how they can use the new technology, uh, which is um, much lower than uh, we think would like it to be. Uh, the stat shows that. Um, 5G has the potential to bring annual revenue increases of up to 15.7 billion for UK businesses by 2025. Um, but that that lack of planning by 85% of companies could see many of them miss out. Um, and, and as I said, I think this is with the with the economy as fragile as it is at the moment, 5G really does have the power and um, could spur on some real, um, some real entrepreneurial businesses to to take the lead as we move forward. 
Uh, so how how will five G shape businesses? Well, um, with the impending recession, uh, as as I said brief um, on the previous slide, five G could provide a real impetus for UK businesses to grow and innovate. Um, so we looked at a, a, a report from PSB Research, which surveyed over three thousand five hundred business people, decision makers, um, and we found the the following results. 91% uh, of those surveys expected new products and services to be invented. 87% expect new industries to emerge. 82% expect SME growth and global competition. And 89% expect increased productivity. Um, so just showing there the, the, the real power and that a lot of people are expecting 5G to make some real changes for business. Uh, moving on to remote working, uh, as, as as we all know, and Craig and I can both um, testify to still at the moment, uh, remote working is really part of the zeitgeist at the moment. Um, it probably hasn't been uh, so much at the forefront down to a number of factors such as um, unstable connections. Uh, we've we've had this on um, our um, Google Hangouts meetings, Craig, haven't we, where certain people yes laggy video connections they'll cut out um, um and, and and all bits like that so what 5g will okay. 5g will bring a really fast reliable internet connection um, and make remote working much easier and more productive uh, some of the video files we have to download and upload some of the um, especially in marketing a lot of stuff we share i'm sure craig shares a lot of very large diagrams and um uh, fast files and uh, I'm, I'm fairly sure he'd love to have a super fast connection so that he can get all that stuff done quicker which which 5g will bring for him yeah absolutely and and i must admit I'm, i've i've even delivered a webinar uh while on the road on a 4g connection in the past <laughs> um you know traveling up traveling up the uh the m1 on the way up, yeah. up north and uh you know having that 5g connection i think will only make that a lot easier for us all Oh God, yeah, fantastic. Well, um, yeah, talking about webinars, um, and we did—I did mention conference calls briefly. What five G will allow people to do is really bring the team um, closer together. So, by incorporating AR or VR uh, with the seamless connectivity of five G, um, it can really and truly make those meetings seem more um, seem more involved and and more like you're actually there if you can't be there due to uh, current circumstances yeah i think we um uh, 5g could have a very very big impact on on rural innovation um it's it's kind of staggering and we don't probably don't realize this but only 63 percent of the uk has mobile data coverage uh, from the four main providers that's a stat from Ofcom in 2017 it might be seem a little bit out of date but that was the last time that this was um, this was commissioned um, so 5g could be a real really really good opportunity for better connectivity for rural areas um, increasing opportunities and promoting um, promoting entrepreneurial activity uh, in fact there is a rural first 5G Rural First, um, a, a government department project which is being run with the private sector um, and it's exploring opportunities enabled by 5G um, in certain um, in certain areas specifically for those, those rural areas where they've been ignored before. Okay. Uh, digital retail, so one place which um, will definitely benefit from um, uh, 5G will be digital retail. Uh, mobile shopping experiences will revolutionize those. Um, I think, um, Craig, you, you you had an experience of um, something similar to this recently? Uh, yeah, but very similar. It wasn't so much um, traveling around, might not have been too 5G specific, but I think if you go into a lot of stores at the moment, especially these um, clothing shops and some makeup and beauty shops, what they actually do is they, they use some camera footage and they, they allow you to actually see yourself and change the clothes that are already on you um, so that you can see what you're looking at and what you would look like with that t-shirt on or with that dress on 
Um, so AR is here, it's being used, and it's even in the shops now. And I think what we'll, what we'll see in the future, especially with 5G, is that that will transfer to our own devices that we carry around. So for, yeah. for example, our mobile phones, and you'll walk into shops and things like that, and you'll, you'll start seeing um, extra information about the products, because that's the next step. People like to shop online, because it's fast, you can put in your details, you can get it delivered to you, everybody's using Amazon Prime these days. Um, now you can walk into a shop, you can sort of get the same experience by just looking around and, and saying click, click, click. Mm. It's the same sort of thing. And I think that's what we'll see, especially especially these days where we, we don't really want to touch too many things because of the, <laughs> the current climate. Um, you might even see that more. Definitely. Um, and the, and another um, another use of 5G that um, uh, should spur on some uh, usage in digital retail would also be uh, the use of smart parking allocation systems. Uh, so um, making it easier for, for, for people to park and find spaces. Um, and also driven by 5G would be the business discovery and the app. So the improved connectivity uh, to help to en encourage the discovery of local businesses, apps and services, and the ability for those businesses to be able to push out messages to the consumers, special offers, um, and, and, and all things like that. So just, just all around uh, better connectivity for retail should help it, um, help it improve its performance. Uh, just briefly touch on um, digital transport because for, for, for me digital transport is, is one of the uh, biggest areas that's going to be transformed um, by 5G. Uh, 5G to usher in the new era of self-driving vehicles, smart traffic lights, um, helping us to reduce traffic, making more intelligent flows. Um, and also the other side of it as well is that um, we are expecting driverless trucks and lorries um, to be on the road in the next 10 years. Um, trials have already begun under um, in, in a few regions in the US and, and across the EU. So it would be useful to see um, what, what comes of that. But um, definitely 5G connectivity because of its um, um, massive performance outside it could be the real spur for this um these the autonomous vehicles and uh yeah yeah that's that's the real driving point behind 5g is that uh they've got mmtc which basically means massive machine type technology um so deployment on a massive scale so we'll, we'll see the connectivity for um what we may consider less important things um but provides that kind of background reading so things tick along in the background a little bit more than we than we actually see okay uh so what what of dealing um got coming in the 5g arena i think that's um uh, that's that's kind of the meat um in the sandwich that we need to talk about now uh, I, I, I briefly mentioned it earlier, but we do have the um, the first of our products is going to be the 5G Wi-Fi 6 mobile hotspot, the DWR2101, uh, which is quite a nice looking machine. They've, I think everyone in the office wants to get hold of one of these, Craig, if, um, if I'm not we mistaken. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and what's really important, Alan, is there are two brand new technologies in here, not just the Ooh. 5G part, but also the Wi-Fi 6 segment as well. <laughs> so Wi-Fi 6 um, is obviously the new AX technology. Um, so you might see it as uh, 11AX, um, also called Wi-Fi 6. It gives you those faster speeds. So, because there's no point in having a 5G connection which goes blisteringly fast, and then having a Wi-Fi that you actually connect with, which would be your <laughs> bottleneck. So, you have to you have to have those two technologies paired together to get the best kind of signal available to you. Um, massive battery on there, 5,300. I think a standard phone these days comes with around four four. Yeah, yeah um, three thousand to four thousand uh, milliamp battery. So yeah, the reason to last. Yeah, yeah, the reason I got the 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 S twenty plus was the extra extra battery size. It um it, it it does last it does last pretty much all day. So um a battery that's over one thousand five hundred milliamps more than that is definitely going to do a a great job for you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it, like I said, you need that battery as well, just to support the touchscreen connectivity as well, because it's got to power on the screen. It doesn't always stay on, of course, 
um, to save power, the screen can come on and off at will. Um, and USB is Type C, so you can actually have that um, fast charging as well. Oh, yes, as I said, we all want one of these. <laughs> yeah. um, just one more thing to touch on with that, Alan. Yeah. Uh, it's in the sub six gigahertz category. Um, so I mentioned MM Wave a little bit earlier, where you've got those. Um, very fast pipelines and that big frequency that's available to you to get these fast speeds. Uh, yeah. The reason it's been sub six gigahertz is because having having that higher frequency doesn't always mean you get the best penetration. So having it at a lower frequency means that you can broadcast further, you can broadcast more stably as well. So you're getting the benefits of a 5G connection, you're gonna get faster, you're gonna get fast speeds, might not be quite as fast as in that higher end category, but it's more useful because there's no point in walking around with a with a mobile hotspot that you walk indoors and you can't use. It has yeah, to be there for you when you yeah. need it. So, yeah, that's that's why it's sub six gigahertz for that. Yeah, that's I, I've I've read that point a lot about the um the performance of the uh the the the, the highest power and the, the the highest frequencies not being able to work so well indoors. So um, um definitely a plus point for the for the system there, taking advantage of all the different uh waves um of five G. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um two more um two more five G routers to um to talk about here. These these are both um, are both project SKUs. So um, if you if you're interested in these um, in these SKUs, give us a give us a call, drop us an email, um, and we can talk to you a little bit more about these. Um, yeah. So, so they're basically routers, Alan. Um, yeah. They come with uh, your standard WAN port, so you can still connect it to your your line, mm. um, but also comes with a SIM slot that you can use for failover if you need mm. to, and you've got five G failover there. Now, the funny thing is. In this kind of technology, which one would you consider the most important connection? Yeah, which one would be the failover? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we, we've had this down. We have a 4G version of this currently. Yeah. And we've used we use the 4G as the backup and we use the WAN connection that's that's the block as, as the primary connection and we have that failover mechanism. But it's gonna be interesting to see who prioritizes what. Because 5G, if it's got the stability and it's got the low latency and it's got the high speeds, why wouldn't you use that as the main the main yes. source and yeah. the wired connection as a backup? Yeah, the wired connection would be the backup. Yeah, there's a yeah. there's a change in style for you there, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, that's we've got DWR nine seven eight. That's going to be your more go to consumer side of uh, the the consumer play, perhaps. Yep. Um, but also very good for business use too. So it's it's kind of prosumer, I suppose, is the word that we use for that. Um, and we mentioned our, our full project, uh, DWR2010, which comes with all the Zigbee technology, which is great for telcos if you're thinking about that and the meshing yeah. systems and, and something as well. Okay. Um, so just to just just to move on very quickly, um, uh, just to go around what we have available today. Um, so moving from from five G to to four G. So uh, we've seen the coverage maps, and we know that that five G is big in the city and all that kind of stuff. But as as a company, D Link isn't isn't leaving four G behind. Um, and in fact, we're we're introducing two new four G products, which are both Cat Six. Um, so faster, um, faster connections up, up to double what we um, what we had on the market previously. Uh, we we know that there's a big market for four G at the moment with a lot of people working from home. And as as Craig said, um, I talked to quite a few people in central London, quite a lot of journalists who tether from their laptops to their mobile phones so and anyone who does that knows that um, you basically can't use your mobile phone while you're using the broadband for it and and, and vice versa and um, so when i talk to them about our 4g routers they're like wow yeah, um where can i buy one from um so uh are the, the the new hotspot we've got the dwr 933 uh, it's a 4G LTE Cat6 hotspot, um, a high-speed portable, um, and it will allow you to share your mobile connections with up to 10 Wi-Fi devices over the over the two Wi-Fi bands. Um, yeah, so so just to be clear, it's a, a Cat6 device, which is yeah. why it's one of the newer ones. Um, 5G is basically built on some of the newer uh, 4G technology. Um, one of those things being LTE, LTE Advanced, you might have seen, or yeah. LTEA. Yeah. 
um, which allows you to reach those sort of 300 megabits per second ranges uh, up from about 150 of standard 4G. Nice. Um, as, a, as a device, uh, very easy to use and very easy to connect. So you, you're, you're in the group, um, well, hopefully in the future, we'll be in a group at a coffee shop or in a group at the park. Um, it seems like social distancing is going to come down to one meter very shortly, which is great. Um, so uh, sharing your Wi-Fi connection, your hotspot connection will be uh, will be very easy again. And the 933 makes it easy um, to add a, add the device just with the um, a simple press of the WPS button. Um, and then pressing the same button on your device to share that connectivity, um, or if not, um, connect to the US, um, connect straight to the USB port um, on your computer, and you can also um, use that to charge uh, the device up as you'd expect. Uh, we talked about we talked about batteries before, so 4G will be slightly less um, power hungry than our 5G devices. So we've we put a 3,000 milliamp um, battery in this, which will last for up to 14 hours. Um, but as as we said, easy e easy to charge, easy to um, easy to plug in to, to to your laptop to keep it. Um, um, to keep it going, but 14 hours should see you out on um, e e even the, the longest of days um, uh, covered by the battery charge. Now. Yeah, I, I think that's something that we, we kind of, a lot of people say, well, I'm happy tethering with my phone. Um, that's not good enough for everybody because no. um, a lot of us who travel, um, you have to remember that you, you're tethering off your phone, so you've got to power the, the other devices that connect it, so it's got to handle all of that data, Plus, it's going to handle the screen as well, so it's got to turn the screen on. Plus, you want to make phone calls and things like that. When you start tethering off your phone, you're only going to last a few hours, and then you're done. You have to go find a charging point for it. Whereas, yeah. if you have one of these devices, 14 hours of, of constant Wi-Fi that you can rely on, it's very different to a, to a tether. Yeah, using using your phone as a phone is um, is a bit of an alien concept for a lot of people, though, Greg, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Um, the, Making the device nice and easy, only 120 grams um, in weight, sort of for easy in, in, in your pocket, in your laptop bag. Um, as, as Craig said, portability with these devices is um, is, is, is absolutely uh, uh, paramount. So um, uh, easy and in, uh, inconspicuous, I, I think, is, um, is, is, is the best word there. So... Um, uh, Built with um, built with portability in mind. Um, the uh, share the data um, share data with people that you choose, so you can you you, you can clearly see here um, that the, the poor yellow umbrella in the bottom right corner there. He's not going to be part of your group, um, but we we know that this is um, this is ultimately very very important now. Um, to make sure that only you're only sharing data with people you know, people you trust, um, uh, because there's um, the, the, yeah there's a, there's a lot of people out there trying to steal people's data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and um, that makes it that makes the device very very useful for family holidays or business trips as Craig mentioned um, I bet he'd love to have a 933 while he was doing his um, his webinar from the side of the M1 <laughs> yeah very uh, very much so very much so yeah and um, big because of the super fast 4g connection um, it, you know your, your 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 group of friends can can all share and they can all just do what they need to do catch up on social media uh, play buffer free games or send just send emails um etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, just a very yeah, very it's, it's good for the kids as well if you go to the beach yeah. you enjoy in the summer weather take it with you and you've, you've got internet connectivity on the beach for all of your devices and things as well if you need yeah well i mean if, if they're if they're anything like like my nieces craig um they both go over their data allowances every month um on on um on 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 GIFGAF or or however um, whichever they tend to use, other network providers are available. Uh, but um, a, a much simpler way would be to just have this one this one dongle that they share between the two of them because the speeds would be 
uh, would be great. And uh, it, you could you could take a you know a ten gig SIM and then share it between the two rather than having to pay for two totally separate connections. So um, could be a good money saving device if you've got multiple children. Just just share this one device between them all. Um, you know the device would be um, more than enough to keep up with all of them. Yeah, and then and then you can think about the contracts that you you yeah. assign. So you contract with less data and it saves you the money there. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. exactly. We're we we we're renaming this podcast the Money Saving Expert Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just to move on to the um, the DWR nine six one. As 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 you uh, as you might expect, we're doing the Cat Six hotspot, so we're also doing a Cat Six, uh, just just a more static static router, um, super fast, um, probably not quite as fast as the Leopard that's that's on the slide there, but um, um, super fast nonetheless. Um, so as as with the hotspot, download speeds of up to um, 300 um, megabits. It's it's wireless AC 1200. Um, so, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, so um, so yeah. So good enough to um, have a nice fast connection on most of your devices. Um, comes with um, four gigabit WANs, um, the, and again. The built-in firewall, the WPA, WPA2 Wi-Fi encryption, um, all help with security and um, and uh, data protection and things like that. Uh, we know that a lot of people are working from home at the moment. Um, so rather than sharing your normal Wi-Fi network with your kids, um, consider potentially getting a dedicated uh, y, um, 4G network for yourself, um, and then if you've got important people's data, um, email addresses, transactional data that you don't want to fall into the hands of um, people using TikTok, people on um, uh, people playing, um, oh, I can't remember, uh, Fortnite, <laughs> the, the, the name is <laughs> then, <laughs> or, or whatever. Showing her age there, yeah. showing her age. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> It's a bit is a bit young for me for a night, but um, um, just just having having your own secure data network for work is is a very good good idea at the moment. Yeah, and, um, absolutely. You... And, and yeah, go just, on, sorry. sorry to interrupt, and but um, just to say that uh, these these do come with a WAN connection as well. Yes. Um, so we mentioned about having that secure network for your business devices if you're working from home, not interfering with your your home network. There's no reason that you can't plug plug this in behind the home network. So you have your internet, you have your home network, and then you plug this device in and it, you're creating an extra layer with the firewall of security for your devices behind that network, but still being able to use your home network as a gateway to get out to the internet. So yeah. that's something really, really important that you can do without necessarily segmenting your network. You can just add an extra layer behind. Well, and, and, and again, Craig, especially people with, with big houses as well with those Wi-Fi um, uh, blackout spots. You you could go and get yourself a, a mesh network, but again, you're you're still sharing that mesh network with your kids, with your TikTok, with your um, social media, and and all of those other things. So, um, if you do have some Wi-Fi black spots, and if your office happens to be in that black spot, then then a four G router could be a very cost effective alternative. So. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, failover mode. Um, so we always we always talk about failover mode with, with our four G, and we briefly mentioned it earlier with the five G product. So we won't go into um, into a lot of depth here. But um, having a four G router at home, especially if you're a home worker or um, <coughs> even if you're new to the home working market, your internet goes down. Your four G failover. Um, uh, router will kick in and and take the uh, take the brunt of the connection. So um, um, a great a great alternative there. But whether as we discussed earlier, whether that reverses with five G and wired connections become the failover or not, um, but it's still the way at the moment with four G that four G is is generally um, the backup network. Um, so. Just, just to finish up, um, super fast um, home Wi-Fi there. So uh, the AC1200 uh, dual band speeds, so 
connect older, slower devices to the 2.4 hertz band and leave the 5 gigahertz band free for high speed data hungry devices. So um, uh, the, the things like things that require a low um, uh, Wi-Fi consumption, so, such as in this example, your lamp, uh, connect those to the 2.4, um, and then your streaming um, devices, your TV, your audio, or your games, and um, connect them to the 5 um, um, giga, gigahertz. So the two dedicated bands there that, um, are put to good use. Okay. Um, so that's um, that's everything from us on on five G. Um, Do you have any closing thoughts, Craig? Um, or uh... it's an exciting time, Alan, and yeah. we're, I think we're all just really looking forward to getting onto it. And um, especially, I mean, four G has been such a good experience over the last few years for a lot of people. Yes. We've really seen how it's changed the way we can work, how we're connected all the time, mm -hmm. um, and having these faster data rates, lower speeds, uh, who knows what that's really going to mean 10 years down the line from now when, when we really start getting that infrastructure set up throughout the UK. Yeah. Um, it's going to be really fun, really fun. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of questions, um, if, we can, if we can slot them in before we go over our time limit. Um, yeah, absolutely. Just, um, uh, some, some we've answered a little bit, but maybe, maybe just a little bit more clarification. Um, the first question, will 5G smartphones support 10 gigabits? Smartphones, yes, they will actually. Um, so Wi-Fi 6 devices as well. Um, there are some smartphones. I think you yourself have a, a, a smartphone with 5G already. I do. Adam, don't you? I, I do. I don't know if it supports 10, 10 gigabits or if 10 gigabits is, is, is coming, but um, I'm, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, data rates are going to be sort of uh, theoretically that 20 gigabits per second. Um, sorry, yeah, 20 gigabits per second data rates anyway. Hmm. Um, so you're going to get that 20G connection. Yeah, 10, 10 gig is, is really, really close to us for, for 5G. Yeah. Um, as we've said before, it's really going to be down to the infrastructure and it's, it's coming up daily, daily by day um, so we've got providers like EE we have O2 they're, they're all putting up their masts um, and there's a big government drive um, to get these masts up as quickly as possible around the country um, and I believe that there's actually an initiative um, we mentioned about rural areas I believe there's an initiative to actually roll this out quicker in rural areas so that they're not left out behind this time for this generation yeah, I think I think that's a I think that's a very a very good a very good idea to be perfectly honest. I feel sorry for. <laughs> um, second question. It's a good question. How will five G latency be lower if processing is being done in the cloud? Oh, okay. That's a very good question. Um, okay, so. In the networking industry, there's always going to be things called bottlenecks. Bottlenecks basically means it's that, uh, if, you, if you imagine having a, um, a pint of milk, one of those old style pint of milks, and you turn it up on his head, uh, it doesn't all come gushing out because of that bottleneck. It slows things down. Um, no different for network infrastructure and data traffic. Um, the When we look at 4G and we look at all these new technologies and 5G, we're talking about the handset to the mast. So that data communication there. So in the past, uh, you could have these fast rates and, and millisecond transfer uh, across the internet for, for these infrastructures. But then when it came from the mask to the handset, that's where the problem lied. That latency came in. So if you're doing a video game, for example, where you need that fast interaction between the server that's, that's hosted in the cloud back to the handset, it was that mask that became the problem. Now we're looking at 5G. That part, that problem is going away. So it's going to speed up that connectivity to the cloud for sure. However, once it hits the mask, it's still basically bound down to how the cloud works. Now, if you're if you're downloading a file, from example, from Amazon or, or something like Amazon's Web Services or Microsoft Azure, it's going to be very fast anyway. Their infrastructure is set up for big data traffic. Um, the masks themselves, the cell structure is going to be um, integrated and, and it's going to be capable of delivering those speeds to thousands of people simultaneously, uh, which it wasn't able to do before. And that's why there's the big infrastructure push on this. So it, you are going to see much better speeds coming from this handset. Might won't be for everything, perhaps, because there's still going to be some legacy devices. But it's, when it comes to the handset and the mask, you're going to be much, much faster. Um, and that, that pipe is going to be much easier to push data along. Brilliant. 
Uh, we we did we did answer this one. Um, uh, will five G make Wi Fi obsolete? Well, um, no, we we don't think it will, but it um, it may reverse the roles um, as as we've said a couple of times. So your five G connection might be a primary connection, and your wired connection might be the backup. But I, I don't I don't really see Wi Fi becoming obsolete any any time soon. I don't know if you disagree with that, Craig. I think it's going to be different from use case to use case. Um, yeah. For example, uh, I, th I think it'd be like a factory. For example, if you've got one of these big warehouse warehouses where you're you're yeah. running around with pallets and you're putting things away, and you've got a scanning gun, um, we've already seen that uh, maybe 4G is a better option because um, a big warehouse is able to just have that scanner and, and send out small amounts of information rather than trying to cover your whole warehouse in Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, so th there's different use cases. It's going to be different for people. Yeah. Um, final question. I, 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 I'm, I'm sure it's a bit of a, a bit of a joke question, but um, when is 6G coming? <laughs> <laughs> Six G. I have no idea. Do you know that one, Alan? I I I did um I did have a look and um they said that um actually the the work on six G and the research into into six G has already started, um but they're not expecting anything until twenty thirty um to be announced on this. So let's 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 get five G in and and implement it before we start talking about six G and having to totally rebuild a massive structure <laughs> <laughs> let's let's hope that whatever 60 years it uses the same as the 5g infrastructure so that we can get it built quickly <laughs> absolutely <laughs> okay um i think that's everything i'm sorry we've um, we've gone slightly over time um if there's any more questions or if you've got any queries um the numbers on screen 0208 955 9000 drop us a line on there um, or drop us an email at uki-sales at dlink.com. Uh, we'll be back in, in three weeks for a webinar. Um, I believe we're doing a um, building blocks of network networks uh, webinar, which is, is going to take us a lot of work because it's going to be um, building networks from scratch and um, try to really help people win more networking contracts by make sure that they build the very best and most optimal networks from the ground up. Um, so that's going to be a very interesting uh, webinar and a, and a lot of work um, for me and Craig to pull that one together. So hence. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very technical webinar as well, that one. Um, we're going to try and get the, to the nitty gritty, but also keep it as a way of, of showing you that kind of thought process for, for winning projects and, um, and, and kit lists and things like that. Brilliant. Okay. Um, so all, all that remains me to say is um, thank you very much for your time. And uh, we'll, like I said, we'll be back in a few weeks. Um, um, so hope to see you all again soon. Bye now. Bye-bye.